The Astros went from an 8-1 road trip across three different cities to a 3-3 three three homestand, capping it off with a frustrating series loss against the Red Sox, a series that they certainly did not deserve to lose. But given the way that they played, I guess you can say they kind of deserve it. But we're going to talk all about it, as well as throw out some updates from around this team, as usual, coming up next. Stay tuned. <laughs> stand 10 games over 500 so they're in a pretty decent spot and they still have a pretty sizable lead in the ALS as they start as we go into this weekend series against the Baltimore Orioles which kicks off at, on Thursday night so probably at, so you know probably tomorrow's when you guys are hopefully seeing this but let's go ahead and talk about it before we do that we got some let's dive into a bit of an injury update um, on Luis Garcia he has been shut down since July for probably about a month at this point and Dana and Joe Espada had stated that he will not be pitching this season as he still recovers from Tommy John surgery which he had received uh, in 2023 again another blow another blow to the starting rotation but it kind of evens itself out in the long run because Justin Verlander was reinstated off the injured list for the series finale I mean he did okay he went six I think he went five innings and gave up just two runs but with but unfortunately the Astros could not give him much run support all in all it does kind of even itself out because as we go in this stretch of 18 games without an off day then we can run a six-man rotation so that everybody in the rotation can benefit with an extra day of rest. And that's especially important for guys like Spencer Arigetti and even Renal Blanco because, as I've said in previous videos, they've really been hitting their innings limits and they really should be getting a break because, you know... It, like that's just how it is and again I was certainly hoping that Luis Garcia and Orleans McCarlos Jr. could come back this season because then one of, or both of those guys could replace Garcia or not Garcia but that could replace Blanco slash Arigetti in the rotation and then they could and then they could be coming out of the bullpen so that they could have a bit of an easier workload but unfortunately, that's just really not going to be the case. This is kind of the point in the season where guys like Renel Blanco should be starting to find consistency a little bit because, I mean, otherwise he could be pitching himself out of our pitching rotation come the playoffs should we make it there. Hopefully that's not the case, but diving into the series itself, we're uh, here in the first game. I was in attendance at this game, and it was a wild game in more ways than one, one of which was the fact that we committed four errors in this game, and it's not very often that you end up on the winning side of a game in which you commit four errors, but nevertheless, let's talk about it. So, it started her off in the first inning, Yusei Kikuchi, it didn't really go so well for him. I thought maybe the Cinderella story was going to end for him in this game, seeing that he had given up two runs in the very first inning, one of which was a home run by Jaron Duran that he hit on the very first pitch of the night, and then the second of which was courtesy of Shea Whitcomb, more so in a way that he actually botched the ground ball that really should have otherwise ended the inning. That's a play that he really should be making 99 times out of 100, but I mean, he's kind of, he's he's a rookie, so I mean, he's going to make mistakes, but at the same time, that's a play that he needs to make. Bregman certainly would have made that play. Bregman, by the way, was actually still unavailable for the first two games of this series. He did play in the series finale, so it's good to see that he's back out there, but I mean, he did say that he may still be dealing with issues uh, with that elbow of his that he's still recovering from so but I mean he did play at least once in this series so that's all I really care about hopefully it's not going to be a long-term issue in September for the rest of this month but the Astros were down two zip going here into the butt into the bottom of the fourth inning there wasn't much action between there the, the Astros were able to get the first two runners on base with Jordan Alvarez getting on base with a double, which would end up being one of three hits that he would hit in this game. Yanir Diaz would follow with a base hit of his own to put men on the corners with no outs for the Astros. And then Jeremy Pena had hit a weak chopper that Jordan Alvarez was attempting to score on. And at first he was ruled that he slid in ahead of the tag. However, the Red Sox immediately challenged the ruling in it determined that Jordan Alvarez did not touch home plate before the tag was applied and thus he was ruled out. So... One came off the board, but on the very next batter, a throwing a throwing error by the catcher Danny Jansen would allow two runs to score after a Victor Caratini base hit allowed Yanir Diaz to score at first. But then the throwing error by by uh, Jansen allowed um, then allowed Jeremy Pena to score all the way from third base, seeing that there were two out. Seeing that even though that there was only one out in the inning, the throw ended up going all the way into right field 
which allowed the runner, which allowed Pena to score. So all in all, the Astros did lose out on a run th thanks to replay review on a call that I personally thought that they really missed. But as I look back and watch the highlights, I think they might have gotten this call right. Seeing that I was at this game, I really thought replay review did re didn't really go our way at all. But as I kind of look back on it and I look at like the official TV footage that fans got to see at home, I personally think that they actually did get these calls right the first time. So, you know, given the fact that I thought that they might have messed it up after all, um, it wasn't really the case. But what really was messed up in this game was the strike zone. Oh my gosh, dude, the strike zone was just absolutely atrocious. Or at least that's what it felt like as I was watching it, like, you know, as one watching this game in person. But it turned out not being as bad as I thought. But despite that, there were a lot of blown strike calls and in, in, you know, certain instances where Astro batters should have been on base or something like that or should have struck guys out where it didn't exactly happen or had to take it had to, you know, see an extra pitch for that to happen or something like that. But and then we head here to the sixth inning at where Romy Gonzalez was able to reach on a throwing error by a second bit by Altuve. That was just a little bit too high and Yonier Diaz's foot came off the bag. The Astros had challenged this and unfortunately they were unsuccessful as you probably would imagine. You said Kikuchi would then strike out the next two batters he would face and that would be the end of his night. Taylor Scott would then enter the game and then he unfortunately gave up a home a line drive home run that just cleared the Crawford boxes. Once once again to Masataka Yoshidi for the Red Sox who was also called on as a pinch hitter as kind of a counter move by Alex Cora I suppose and despite the fact that it appeared that a fan in the Crawford boxes reached out and touched the ball before it had cleared the line the umpire the umpires quickly reviewed the call and the home and the call of a home run had stood so it was 4-2 Red Sox the error that Altuve had committed at the very beginning of this inning that allowed Romy Gonzalez to reach came back to bite the Astros hard as they were down by two going into the bottom of the eighth inning which was when our next bit of action happened here uh as we get or actually no not the fifth and eighth inning the sixth inning here after the Astros once again had gotten the first two guys on with base hits Myers, unfortunately, instead of bunting somebody over, had ended up striking out swinging. And then John Singleton, off of the bench, would hit a sack, what was able to bring one of those two runs home with a sack fly. Four to three Red Sox going into the bottom of the eighth inning. Though in the seventh inning, there was a, the Astros did waste another scoring opportunity here, as once again they would end up getting it for. Uh, they would end up getting uh, have another inning with at least two base runners. Jeremy Pena would then strike out to end that threat on a rather questionable AB because the second pitch during this AB was called a strike, but it was clearly not a strike as you can see. So again, another botched call in the strike zone. Yonio Diaz, well before that, had actually called his second timeout after he had already used his timeout earlier in his AB and was rung up on a pit and was rung up on an automatic strike to end his AB. Personally, that was a little bit stupid, but at the same time, that's kind of on Diaz because he really should have known that he didn't have a timeout left. And for those that were curious, no, it was not a pitch timer violation. It was actually Diaz being penalized for using his timeout after he had already used it. So figured I'd clarify that. But going into the bottom of the eighth inning, the Astros would have rallied to tie this game up, and it started with Victor Caratini drawing a leadoff walk that unfortunately was erased on a double play ball by Jake Myers. But Chaz McCormick was able to snap out of his slump that he was in with a base hit to get him to get himself on base as the tying run. He would then steal second base before a Mauricio Dubon single would would score him to tie the game at four. And unfortunately, despite the Astros having the potential winning run in scoring position for Jose Altuve, he would strike out swinging to end the inning after earlier in his AB, a foul ball that he had hit down the left field line. I didn't really get a good vantage point of it, seeing that I was along the left field line. But unfortunately, his base hit had landed just foul by probably inches. I don't know how close it was exactly. But nevertheless, that was certainly the turning point of the AB, and he would end up striking out to end that inning. But coming into the bottom of the ninth, Yanir Diaz delivered the swing of the night. And well... Unfortunately, I did not get a full reaction video from this game like I probably should have, but seeing that I'd actually gotten one for Saturday's game, which I'm actually still working on, I should have that posted here this weekend, hopefully. But um, but I pulled my phone out anyway in hopes to record a little bit of drama, and, well, see for yourself. If we go to Manfred Innings here, we're going to go. Oh, 
Okay, man. Yes, that's right, man. Yonier Diaz delivered the swing of the night for the Astros with a walk-off towering blast that just that just barely missed getting onto the train tracks, but it was a home run nevertheless. The Astros would go on to win 5-4. to four. Now, unfortunately for me, this would end up being a rather expensive visit to an Astros game because on my way home, I actually popped a tire. And I'm certainly looking at that as a pretty bad omen because the Astros have actually dropped or ended up dropping the final two games in this series with them losing 6 to 5 on it. Tuesday night, I didn't watch this game cuz I was cuz I worked a double shift at work today, so I just caught up on some highlights here. Jaron Duran out of the leadoff spot was definitely the story in this game as he would end up hitting as he would end up getting four hits and also scored most of the Red Sox runs including in the first inning off of Ronel Blanco who like I've said is losing his consistency. It's, you know, it's kind of sad to see that after the workhorse that he really was in the first half of the season and during spring training that he's starting to fall apart a little bit. But, it, I mean, I'm really hoping it's just fatigue. And, I mean, it really is because he's not exactly used to pitching in a full season just yet. But at the same time, dude, he needs to try to get it together. But he would end up giving up three runs in the very first inning to the Red Sox, though that lead for the Red Sox would luckily be short-lived as the Astros would respond with three runs of their own, capping it off with a two-run blast by John Singleton into the stands to knot it up. But the Red Sox would answer then in the top, but and then the and then the then the Astros would then go, take their first lead of the night on a sack fly by Chas McCormick in the bottom of the second inning to make it three to make it four to three. Though the Red Sox would answer back with four, with two more runs of their own with another RBI base hit by Jaron Duran, his second hit that his second hit of the game. He actually went a perfect four for four in this game, and his fourth hit of the night was a late dinger in the eighth inning off of Caleb Ort to put the to put the Red Sox up 6-5, and that would end up being the final score in this game. This is again coming down to managerial decisions by Joe Spada, rather poor ones at that. Put the guy on base if he is coming up with having, you know, with as many as three hits. Because I mean, we again, this was a this was very similar to that White Sox game last weekend. Like we have one guy in the lineup that's single-handedly beating us. Nobody else in the Red Sox lineup of this game had more than two had more than two hits. I mean, Casas, the Red Sox first baseman, went two for three in this game. But I mean, overall, you know, the Red Sox lineup was mostly in check in this game. This guy again was single-handedly the difference maker over the course of this game. I'm sorry, but like, I mean, poor decisions are certainly coming to bite us. And this was certainly the reason why we lost this game. Certainly the reason why we lost this series, that is for sure. But yeah, the Astros would score one more time in this game, I believe, in the fifth inning um, with a Yanir Diaz bomb, which would with a home run by Yanir Diaz, his second in as many games, or actually that would be his third in as many games, if I'm not mistaken, because he homered in the White Sox series finale on Sunday. But yeah, like I said, that was not enough for the Astros to win this game against the against the Red Sox, as you know they were as unfortunately they didn't really get many hits against the Red Sox bullpen. And then going into the series finale here, the Red the Red Sox were unfortunately able to salve it to get the series finale and take the series from the Astros. Astros as they as the Astros certainly had their opportunities in this game and despite Justin Verlander but going five innings in this game in his first return off the injured list he got six strikeouts the Astros could not back him up with run support the Red Sox would once again be striking first early on in this game with a sit with an RBI single by Tristan Cassis but Alex Bregman would answer right away with a with a leadoff home run from the leadoff spot with Jose Altuve getting the day off the Astros had a good scoring opportunity in this game in the bottom of the seventh inning with them with Jake Myers and Mauricio Dubon both getting base hits and then a wild pitch by the Red Sox pitcher Greg Wissert allowed them both to advance into scoring position but unfortunately the bottom of the order could just just could not come through and Alex Bregman and and despite us having a chance here with Alex Bregman and Jordan Alvarez, unfortunately, neither of those guys could get any of those runs home. That was the last base runner the Astros would get in this game. And then David Hamilton for the Red Sox would put the game out of reach with a home run in the bottom in the top half of the ninth inning, cementing the series victory for the Red Sox. So overall, very tough series. But I mean, considering that you went eight and one on this road on this last road trip, and then go to a three and three home stand against some rather subpar teams, especially the White Sox, for instance. This series you really should have been sort of swept to begin with and I'm not saying that Boston that the Red Sox are a bad team per se you know at the same time this was a series that you probably should have won at least certainly could have taken game two and again you probably had your opportunities like you know in game three of this series when it's all said and done I mean there's not much you can really do 
But con considering what's up next for the Astros, they will be traveling and hitting the skies for a rather tough series that lays in wait for them in Baltimore. And then after that, they'll be going to Philly. So very tough road trip lies ahead. And then they'll be capping off the month with four games against the Kansas City Royals. Also, again, very good team. They swept us earlier this year. So it's going to be a rather tough stretch to close out the month of August. But I would certainly think the Astros can do it. If they can at least have a winning record over these last, like, what, 11 games or something like that, then, I mean, I'll be happy with that. Because, I mean, that's, I mean, that would at least show us that at least we're a somewhat good team. Because then as we go into September here, then that's when the schedule is going to be lightening up just a little bit. And then, you know, hopefully we can start, you know, making our final push for another division title. And then as our lead grows against the Mariners, hopefully then we'll be able to rest some of our guys much like how we did today. Like I said, dude, a uh, very tough series. I mean, hopefully they'll be able to bounce back in Baltimore this weekend because, you know, it's going to be a rather tough road ahead of us if we, you know, if we end up losing three out of four there. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you want to watch any of my other stuff, click these cards that are above my shoulders here. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next video.